What is up my dudes and that one girl going crazy over a sharp dressed man. This is Bikes, Beards and Brews. Let's kick that intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we kick this one off, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. New videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Probably going down to two when it gets too cold. You've been warned. Let's get the other stuff out of the way. Want to save 10% on a Cardo communicator? Check my referral link down below. Want to support me and all my do goodness like these cool guys here? Boom! Then you should check my coffee page also down below. Want to know why I'm asking you for money? Surprise, that link's down below as well. And one more link through the month of November until December 9th when it is cut off. There is a GoFundMe link down below where I am doing my annual toy drive. Even a dollar counts, it adds up. I'd much appreciate it if you guys just kind of help me out and support me with this. 100% of the funds raised are going to buy toys for kids in need. Plain and simple, no middleman, nothing else. That's what's going on. So let's get into today's video. We're talking about Dixon flannels and are they really worth it? So a lot of you know, if you've followed my channel for a while, you've definitely seen me in multiple Dixon flannels. I own a lot of Dixon flannels. That's, I like the shirts, I like the material, I like what they produce, and so I buy them. However, that doesn't make them good. It doesn't make them the best. It doesn't make them uh, at a good price point. It doesn't make that, like essentially, this is my point of view when I buy those shirts. But I wanted to dig into Dixon as a company just a little bit more. And I wanted to dig into some of their products just a little bit more and show you what's there and have a conversation about if they're right for you, if they're too expensive, if the quality's good or bad, so on and so forth. So let's get into that. Okay, so Dixon Flannel is veteran owned. Um, in the story right now that they're telling you on their page, uh, he was looking to create a flannel shirt for motorcycle riders. They've definitely gone off track since then by all means. But here's some of the other stuff you may not realize. All the Dixon flannels right now are actually version 2.0. They actually had a 1.0 previous to this. The 1.0 the, and the 2.0 are very different. And I've actually brought some examples to show you. So this is a 1.0. The big difference is, is there's no gusset in the back so when you're reaching forward and stuff like that it doesn't give you that extra room. On the inside of the shirt there is no microfiber sleeve to like kind of wipe down sunglasses and stuff like that. The cufflinks are not mitered like they are in later versions. There's a couple other small differences. The materials definitely, it feels a little different as well. Both shirts are actually 100% polyester. We'll get into that just a little bit more in a little bit. So yeah, that is the 1.0. This would be a 2.0. So the big difference is here. As I said, you've got the gusseted back. So when you reach forward and stuff like that, the sleeves are actually a little bit longer on the 2.0s. The cuffs actually have that little mitered corner. Um, and the last thing, yeah, it looks like a pile of fabric, I get it. They have this little microfiber sleeve. So straight out, this thing is almost completely useless. Nine times out of 10, I find myself just using my shirt to clean my glasses. It, this is too small. They start printing stuff on it, so that actually gets in the way. You now can't use this side without like marring up your lenses. So that's kind of dumb. But yeah, I, I just have not found this to be a very good or very useful piece of fabric. Um, some of the other stuff you may wanna know is Dixon flannels are actually made in China. So one of the big issues about Dixon altogether is the price. And that's gonna be one of the biggest complaints that you always hear about Dixon. So on average, a new Dixon flannel shirt without a sale is $60. That is kind of on the high end for what you're buying, especially being that these are actually made in China. Um, they are imported in afterwards and then they're branded up. There's been multiple reports from users who own Dixons that have shown that you can go to websites like Alibaba 
and order the exact same shirts without the Dixon branding on them for a lower cost. Uh, that really does make sense because honestly, each Dixon flannel shirt, if you're unfamiliar, comes with its own like sort of name and branding. Like everything's gonna have something. So this one's called The Count. And it's a reference to Nosferatu. This was released during their Halloween collection of 2022. Let's be honest, at no point in time in Nosferatu were they running around with this flannel pattern. Uh, Dixon basically looks at a shirt and goes, that looks like something we can market as a vampire shirt. I mean, this one right here, again, this is a 1.0. This is actually called the Chainsaw. This is supposed to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. At no point in time in the 100 Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies made has Leatherface ever worn a red flannel. Um, and I think I could safely say really nobody else in the, like main character wise has either. But this is, you know, Dixon looked at this and they're like, that's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre flannel let's charge $60. So that is a thing, and that's something you have to be aware of when you buy the shirts. They all come branded with something. They're all marked as $60, unless they're on sale, or there's a deal, or there's a special. Um, and there's really no rhyme or reason. They're just like, this looks like A, and then they put their branding on it, and they sell it. Good marketing idea on their part. I give them points for that because otherwise you're just like, hey, red and black check pattern on a flannel, give us money. That's a little bit harder to market. Um, one of the other things that they do is they, they make hats, they make gloves, they make board shorts. Now this is where you start to see the wheels come off on Dixon. And like this is their Friday the 13th board shorts that came out this year. One of the absolute worst parts to this and one of the cheapest things is if you look right here on the seam, the pattern does not match up. Now, look, if you're buying these out of like Walmart or something for like $10, that's fine, I get it. But that's really Bush League for something that's claiming to be a very premium, very high-end company, which Dixon does do right on their website, in fact. Um, some of the other issues that I see with Dixon and yeah, I'm, I'm gonna pick them apart a little bit right now, so get ready, especially if you're a huge Dixon fan. Uh, here's, here's your trigger warning. That's a huge issue for me. Another one, like I said, $60 for a flannel because you're like, that's a chainsaw flannel. Come on, guys. That sort of stuff is absolutely ridiculous. Another big issue with uh, Dixon is they've actually come out and said many times that they know that people are selling their shirts like brand new on the secondary market for incredibly inflated prices. And they're like, well, we believe in the free market and we're not gonna intervene, we're just gonna let people do things. On their website, they say that their shirts are highly sought after and it's not uncommon for them to be sold out very quickly. Quite honestly, what's happening here is Dixon is ordering low run counts of their shirts to inflate demand and cause that sort of artificial demand for the shirts. Then what happens is people sit there and they wait for them to get released because Dixon really likes to do the, this shirt's dropping Monday at 8 p.m., be there, uh, sort of things online. And people will actually just wait and they will buy up a ton of shirts. They will buy five 2X shirts. They will buy five large shirts. And then they immediately go to private Facebook groups or eBay or stuff like that. And they sell them exponentially more expensive. They, they will say, hey, this super limited shirt that is sold out, $100 plus shipping on a shirt that was 60 like two days prior. So that is where that like artificial sort of inflation comes from. That's where that artificial demand comes from. And that's one of those things where I just look at it and I'm like, Dixon, you, you guys are kind of assholes on that. Like, you know what you're doing. You know what people are doing in the aftermarket and you're letting it happen so you can sell, which I mean, quite honestly, it's very smart on their part because, I mean, they have created a demand for their shirts that, you know, can't be matched. I mean, quite honestly, you could, you could probably go to like a hundred different websites that have a very similar shirt to this for probably like 40 bucks. You'd probably get this at like, I don't know, like a JC Penny or something for like 40 bucks. It just wouldn't have the Dixon branding. 
And, and you don't because there's that artificial demand that Dixon has created. So that's pretty jacked up, Dixon. Really, really it is. It's shady. And this is one of those things, like I said, it's smart on their part, so I, I can't actually fully tear them down on this. And it's only happening because people let it happen. When you don't buy the shirt exactly when it comes out and then you're willing to pay like double the tag price to get it in the aftermarket, you're just strengthening this. You're making it so these resellers will keep doing this. You'll make it so Dixon keeps like short selling these things, like, you know, just ordering way too few and then releasing them. It's, it's supply and demand, guys. It really is. Um, I will say on a positive note, they are very comfortable shirts. I do enjoy wearing them. I do find them to be comfortable. Uh, if you follow the care instructions, they do like they do what they say. They don't get wrinkled. They don't get like a bunch of little pills on them and stuff like that. They are comfortable, good looking shirts. And I do like the way they fit and the way they wear. So that is one of those things where, you know, that is why I personally keep buying them. One of the other things is, I tend to look for a lot of the sales and the discounts. Like Dixon throws a lot of sales out of there. If you're a military veteran, there's a veteran discount on their site. You can find that very easily. So if you're gonna buy a shirt, make sure you apply that. Don't leave money on the table. Um, another thing is they're always having sales. It'll be like, oh, you know, midsummer sale, 40% off. They always do a Black Friday sale where there's a lot of like discounts. During the Halloween season, some of these shirts were released at a cheaper price. I, I think, I almost wanna say I got this um, count one at like $40. So, I mean, the deals are there. You may not always get the shirt that you want because again, they don't order enough <laughs> to keep in stock. But if you're looking for a, a good, comfortable flannel shirt, you can get these on sale and they will be good. So keep that in mind. Um, I actually let a few other people know that and I know other moto vloggers, uh, UCM Pigs in fact. I told him about this uh, earlier in the summer. I sent him a discount code when it got released and he ended up getting like one or two shirts for them for like 30 bucks. So it's possible, it's out there. You just have to realize what you're getting into. And quite honestly, Dixon, um, you guys need to get your house in order a little bit. Like I said, stuff like this, where like the patterns aren't even matching up and this is not even an isolated thing. Um, I've seen this on the shirts. I've seen this on um, some of the party shirts, some of the um, button up short sleeves. Like they do have a lot of different products that they offer and you were seeing this and it's because these are mass produced in another country and they're just getting rebranded and pushed out to you. So. Be aware of that. That's really all I have for today. It's something I, I just want to talk about. I just want to put out there and you know leave it so you guys could make an educated decision on if you want to purchase Dixons or not. There's my pros, there's my cons. Sound off down below. Do you have some Dixon shirts? What are the pros and cons to you? Have you not bought any? What's stopping you from doing it? Do you have another place that you like that's even better? Drop that name down below too. Let's start a conversation. But aside from that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Dude, check out that GoFundMe. Seriously, it's a good cause. And share this video with friends. Share it with family. Share it with that one dork you know who owns everything Dixon and is convinced that they are a flawless company and there's nothing wrong and you're wrong for bringing anything up that's negative. He loves this stuff, trust me. I'll see you all on the flip side.